Hello and welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all of my channel members whose names are appearing on screen right now. If you want to become a channel member, you can do so by clicking the link in the description and there are two tiers. Uh, the first name is Shout Out Supporter, which means that in the beginning of every reaction, you will get your name appear on screen. And the second tier is the weekly catch ups, where I either go live or I do a video, usually, which is like a get ready with me, some live updates. And it's just, and it's just a bit more of an intimate chat setting. Now, obviously, you don't have to become a member. You're you watching the video, liking it, commenting, sharing it. All of that is greatly appreciated. And also, if you want, you can leave a super thanks. That would also be greatly appreciated. So, now that that is out of the way, let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. And shall we turn the blinds off? Yes. If you're curious what that's all about, I would say mostly check out my Instagram. I do upload uh, a vlog once a week and uh, I do some shorts or stories or reels or TikToks or whatever you want to call them here and there. Uh, all of that linked down below. But today we're going to be looking at Beatrice, Beatrice Caruso and we're going to look at her 1st of January full day of eating. She's allegedly, well, not allegedly, she's still on a weight loss journey. I did a reaction to her a few days ago or like um, over the weekend. Uh, I'm not sure when you're going to see this. But basically, I discovered that she was heavier <laughs> now than when she started her style. So she's basically done. Pretty much an ambling read. Oh, well, maybe not quite as bad because she didn't gain a lot of weight. But over three years, she's basically stayed the same weight. Pretty much there or thereabout. So we're going to look at this what I eat in a day video. Because I'm very curious to see what she actually eats in a day. Because I feel, again, what she does is very similar to what April used to do. Uh, is show all the healthy full days of eating. And then, like, the exercise and all of that. And then there is no weight loss. Now, if you're eating healthy all the time, then... You should be losing weight, and if you're not losing weight, that's because you're not eating <laughs> yeah, healthy. So I'm just curious if it's a, a case of portion control, or whether she's just somebody that only wants to show the good sides. I know that she talks about mental health, and like that she works on it, etc, etc, I know that. Um, but I also feel like if you have 350,000, 362,000 people in your subscribers, uh, you should not only film full, like you should not only show like the good days of eating. If you're going to be transparent and open and honest about your weight loss journey, then show a realistic day of eating, not when you're just having the odd good day, in my opinion. Whenever I do full days of eating, I show you what I eat. Obviously in a prep, it's the same shit every single day. Um, but if it's out of prep, I show you if I'm having uh, a croissant or if I'm having a chocolate or something like that. Because that's a realistic day of eating. That's why I am not super shredded all year round. I mean, for norm for normal people, I'm I'm lean, leanish. I maintain I maintain a healthy, I maintain a lower level of body fat, but um, I eat a lot though, <laughs> like around three and a half thousand calories a day. So, but besides that point, let's see what she is uh, eating, and then we'll we'll go from there. You know, my scale eyes are second to none, so I'm going to be able to estimate the calories fairly well. Not going to stick it in my fitness pal because um, I want to react to another video after this so but daisy we've literally just been for a walk for an hour and a half we've done girl we've done literally it's 7 30 and i'm filming now because i'm gonna go and have a training date with a girl that i competed against actually and not like that not 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 romantic just like a, a, a girlfriend date we've done six and six thousand four hundred steps so far missus it's enough isn't it i think it's enough Right, let's get into the video. The video is sponsored by Lifesum. I can definitely see how people fell in love over this dish. He's doing this to me. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm uh, relating a little bit too heavy to a Katy Perry song right now. And I would like to not to. I would like to not to feel like a plastic bag floating in the wind. Because I feel like I know what that means now. And it's not great. My mind is just a clutter today. But why? Why? And I found myself in this. I like was avoiding. I was scanning through the comment section of my last video, and it's very much like you know, the quirkiness of her personality. It was it was fun and exciting, but it's 
I just saw into a wolf in it. It's it's all well and good to be different and weird, but if you're gonna do a weight loss channel, you should really lose weight. I don't know. Personality is well and good, and obviously it's helped her to get on YouTube and making very good money doing so, but let's do something about uh, the weight loss. Like weird paralysis kind of thing where I'm just like sitting here having a bunch of things to do. But this is like, this is literally every video of every single weight loss person that I watch is that they're always talking about all of these thoughts that they're having and all of the spare time that they have. I wonder if there's a correlation. Maybe get a job, get a hobby, get a part-time job, do volunteering, have less spare time in your day so you have less time to pro procrastinate on things that don't matter. Because there is clearly a direct correlation with lack of success and having too much spare time. So maybe be busy so you don't have time to think about things. You don't have time to sit around and eat. And, you know, maybe you'll lose some weight. And not moving. So let's go try a persimmon. Okay, we're mainly going to make shashuka right now, which is something that I only know about because of watching Love is Blind. I think I'm neutral about them. It's like Alright, so this is the boyfriend then, yeah? Yeah, this is the boyfriend. We've, I think uh, this is the question that I had if it was a boyfriend or not, and it turns out it is. So good for her. Nice for her that she has a boyfriend. I don't even know what score I would give it. What score would you give it out of six? Three. Just below good. I give it a four. I don't think it's bad, but I would never seek it out. Some of you asked why I started rating things out of six, and it's because Steven went on this big old tirade about why, why, sure did. <laughs> why scoring systems out of ten or five are bad. You want to share with the class? Because if it's an even number, you can't be a middle picker. There is no middle, you have to choose a side. No one can hear you, you're not in front of the microphone. The only thing people are hearing is the freaking kettle going. Do you know what, this is like completely unrelated, but in Holland, when you go to school, you get marked out of zero to 10. And I just don't understand the A plus, B plus, and in Sweden they have uh, MVG, or M MVG, and G, and VG. Like, it's such an inaccurate scoring system. It's like, in Holland, it literally goes on like a percentage. It's like, you, you, you get a 5.2 or a 9.7 or an 8.3 and then all of that gets accumulated and then depending on like how heavy it, how heavy the coursework scores because some some work is like three times some work is once like add it all together and then divide it and that's your overall score but it's like an a plus it's like if you get an a it's like if you get an a you get an a so an a, but an a is like a, a score of 90 percent and above or something like that so it's like it's not fair that i get the same grade as somebody else if we if i did better I don't know. I think uh, the, the ratings of 0 to 10, I think that makes a lot more sense to me. <laughs> okay. He said basically the number system is so you can't be a middle picker, which is what most people typically do. You know, if something's out of 5 or if something's out of 10, they pick the exact middle. But if there's an even number, there is no middle. Although, like, as I'm saying it, his you logic do, isn't logic. You can do halves. <laughs> Nobody does halves. You're like, because, like, to me, when you just said 3, I'm like, that's the middle. That's because you're, you're used to out of 5, 3 is the middle. But when you do it out of 6, Three is below. Three is the middle. Three it's is not, so mid. It's one, two, three. No, she's right. Like three is the lower half, and then four is the upper half. Three, four, five, six. There is no middle. Well, I know that. He's doing this to me. <laughs> so there's no middle. You're right. You have to like lean you either have, to one you side. You have to indicate a direction. You're forced to pick. Check this out. Whatever. Let's make some shashuka. Okay. Like I said, I heard about shashuka from Love is Blind. I just googled it. Uh, like this is around Christmas, um, and this is before I lo looked at a video from well, English words. Wow, uh, this was before I looked at a video that's more recent. Um, but she's definitely looking bigger here. So my guess is that so she was like three hundred, no, two hundred and sixty pounds. So I have to screenshot actually. Hold on. So uh, pretty much when she started her channel, she was two hundred and fifty-two pounds. This is like on the twenty-fourth of April, twenty twenty. I'm gonna guess. That here, she's maybe 270, my guess. Because the scale eyes, if you watched my last, last Amber video, I am literally, usually pretty on point with estimating people's weight. So season five, Alexa and Brennan, their whole relationship was founded on Shashuka. And I was like, what is this? Need to know. And then I forgot about it. But then Pinterest reminded me that it was a thing. It's like an egg and vegetable dish, which I'm always searching for. I think it's a Turkish dish, is it? I think it might be. I think it's like a... Is it in tomato sauce? Tomatoes with egg. And I think I've had it before. It's really nice. I think I've had it before. I'm pretty sure it's Turkish. I could be wrong. Or at, it, it, in the, at, at the very least it's Middle Eastern. Uh, it's got parsley and stuff in it. But I'm pretty sure it's like 
tomatoes and stuff. New and improved ways to eat eggs. The standard gets very just predictable and we're ready to... I love eggs. I'm like, I just don't... An egg is always good in it. Boiled, poached, an egg white. At the moment I'm going through a thing of having like a lavash wrap. Warm up a little bit because they're a bit dry otherwise because they're very low fat. And then I put some avocado, I pan fry some avocado with a very low calorie spray and I just spray it one to one to seconds. Pan fry my avocado, maybe a bit of red onion, egg whites, and then I put that in a wrap and it's freaking delicious. Spice up our life. Spice up your life. So let's just try this whole shishuka thing out and see how it goes and just have a chill what I eat in a day video. We haven't done one of those in a while. Do you know what, since I'm a contact, since I wear contact lenses, which I've done for a long time, I don't get problems with uh, onions and crying. Weird, isn't it? It's quite a bit of oil. That's at least like, I'm going to say that it's like two and a half to three tablespoons. Which is like for one person, as a, I, cause that's, I'm assuming she's going to cook for her partner as well. It's not so bad, but we'll see. <laughs> that's a very organized fast roll. <laughs> Yeah, so, so with tomatoes and stuff like that, it's you're obviously better off using actual tomatoes as opposed to tomatoes from a tin. If you're going to use tin tomatoes, are you trying to lose weight? Like, really keep an eye on the salt and the sugar content because that some of them are a lot more higher carb than others and a lot higher salt than others. Um, but realistically, to like. You know, what I, what I normally prefer to do, if like if I do something like this, it's just like use actual tomatoes and a bit of a little bit of tomato paste, just to enhance to enhance the tomatoiness. But if you get a, like a big tray of tomatoes and you just roast them in the oven with some garlic and rosemary, um, maybe some bay leaves, salt, pepper, maybe a little bit of olive oil, some onions, some peppers, or something like that, like that's that makes for a really nice uh, base for any tomato sauce, really. Obviously, this is made of tomatoes. Fucking hell. So I do, I do say, I say some, I say some profound things sometimes. Huh? <laughs> At least I'm self-aware. There's that. You know, you just crack the eggs in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Turkish. Yes, I've made this before as well. It's really nice. Okay. And you bake it, so you should normally eat it with fair bread, flat, flat bread, and you put the parsley on top. The eggs on this are looking a wee bit more gelatinous than I would like, but the edges of the whole sauce situation are looking extra crispy. I don't have a lid for this pan, so that was probably mistake number one if you're making it yourself. You could just stick it in the oven, like grill it for a couple of minutes. It would achieve the same thing. Then you don't want gelatinous eggs. Use a pan with a lid, but I think I'm just gonna call it as far as cooking and plate this bad boy up and see what this is all about. Here she is in all of her glory. This it's, it's gonna be delicious. This is so beautiful. I almost don't want to eat it, but I also really, really do. I'm just gonna kind of mix the egg around in the already warm sauce to finish cooking the bits that are still a little bit wibbly, or just hide them. I mean, this this start this meal would have probably been around like five six hundred calories, I think, with the two eggs, the oil, the bread, and just everything else. So it's not it's not a bad start to the day. Obviously, she is a bigger person so she can eat a lot more. I wouldn't stick her on like a 1500 calorie day diet. If she was a client of mine, normally speaking, the people that are coached are, unless you have a lot of problems with metabolism and stuff like that, normally speaking, um, people are, on, if they're over like 250 pounds, I put them on around, like, on around two and a half thousand calories if they're weight training as well, maybe a bit more, something like that. High on training days, I do highly, uh, I prefer to do high and low days, so on training days, people eat more and they eat less on rest days. Which kind of makes sense because you're just usually speaking not as hungry because you're exercising as much. I don't know what happens here. And we will give this a taste test. What are you doing? How did I not know that this existed? I can definitely see how people fell in love over this dish. Yeah, it's really nice. 
This is fantastic. It's just like so comforting and filling and heartier than typical breakfast. You, see, you season it with like sumac, um, paprika, smoked, sweet, maybe a bit of cumin, salt, pepper. It's very good. This is, it's healthy. Even the little burnt bits that I made add something to it. A few moments later. Okay, apologies. I just spent the last eight minutes eating this and not talking to the camera at all. And then the battery died. So if you're shifted just a little, that is why. <laughs> But I think I'll give this dish like a solid 8 out of 10. And I know we discussed a whole like different rating scale at the beginning of this video, but I honestly, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, Steven's wrong. Why are you rating things at a 6? Just seems wrong to me. Although it does kind of make sense. I don't know. Anyways, I love this. It's like everything that I hold near and dear to my heart wrapped up in one dish. You got tomatoes, eggs, cilantro, garlic. Need I say more? So good, and I'm definitely going to be adding this to my recipe. Yeah, so cilantro, I don't think it, that, 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 that's something they would use in turkey. Because... Yeah, in Turkey they don't really... Over here they don't use a lot of coriander, it's more part or mint. But I don't see... It probably is very nice with uh, coriander, fresh coriander as well. It gives it maybe a bit more of a Mexican-y vibe as opposed to like a Middle Eastern. Box. I've kind of made it my personal mission this upcoming year to cultivate this arsenal of recipes that are healthy and you... Didn't, didn't she do that last year? Because she spent like an awful lot of time like laminating and writing out recipe cards, right? I'm pretty sure that there's some. I remember watching videos of her doing that. And she's not a terrible cook. She cooks some nice food and some of it is healthy, but um, I guess that it's only okay to do that for a video, right? <laughs> she doesn't really bother doing it otherwise. Use like less processed ingredients, and this definitely is a winner. I'm also making it a mission to start tracking what I eat. It's just helpful for uh, lots of different. But then in the last video, we saw that she doesn't like counting calories because it's boring. So the only way to lose weight is unfortunately tracking calories. And I'm surprised she hasn't been doing this. So how did she think she was going to lose weight then? <laughs> By not tracking food. You need to weigh things out. You need to track it to make sure you're either eating enough or you're eating below what was recommended. A lot of people oh, under eat also. This happens a lot. I'm somebody, if I don't have a coach, I under eat a lot. Maybe it's rem remnants of like having been eating disorder for many years very possible. But if I was left to my own devices, I only eat like 2,000, 2,500 calories. If my coach tells me to eat three and a half, I will eat three and a half. So I'm paying him for. So, you know, like tracking food and tracking calories is important. Now, I don't at the moment actually track what I eat actively because I get a meal plan from my coach. And but what I do is, is I kind of know that 200 grams of rice is around 50 grams of carbs, which is the equivalent, like 55 grams of carbs, something like that, which is also the equivalent of um, X amount of potato or a wrap here with maybe some this and this. So like I use the food guidance and I replace it with other carb sources and other protein sources and other fat sources because prep starts again in pretty much two weeks. So for now, I'm just like freestyling it. This morning, for example, I had some sweet potato because I'm gonna make an oat sweet potato oat bake. Watch one of my last vlogs if you wanna see how I make it. The recipe is in there as well, like the breakdown in the screenshots. Um, so I baked some sweet potatoes and I'm training, so I need to eat something now because otherwise I'm going to be really starving, but I will eat my pre-workout meal, which I always have. But I had some sweet potato with cottage cheese and it was really nice. So the sweet potato I had with a little bit of butter because it was warm in the oven. Maybe five grams of butter, a bit of salt, mix it into the sweet potato, around 150 grams of sweet potato. And then uh, I had a tub of cottage cheese, 200 grams, uh, on the side with some, with some white chocolate drops and cinnamon. And it was... Really tasty, actually, because I don't normally eat it, but I like, um, I had the purple sweet potatoes. It was very nice, especially with some salt and butter. Oh, sometimes it's the little things, but lit, like I said, five grams of butter. You know, not just freestyling a stick of butter. Different reasons. I mean, I'm trying to get enough protein in there, stay under an allotted calorie goal because I would like to lose weight. And all of that is definitely easier with LifeSum. If you didn't know, LifeSum is a nutrition-based app that helps people stay on top of their goals regardless. <laughs> sure, all right. Who would have thought? I mean, come, come, blame it. Right? In the day, money is money, making money. Like if it's a, if some, if an app like that came to me, I used it, and I think it's functional. I would obviously take the sponsorship as well. But I only get like people from Timu and stuff like that hassling me, or for like other weird products that I don't feel are suitable for my channel. 
regardless of what they are. It allows you to track your meals, water intake, workouts, etc. They make it really easy to track because they have a bar it's basically like muffin as well. barcode scanner. You can scan in food items and then all of the nutritional information is just populated there. It's just super convenient. There's also a huge food database. So for items that do not have a barcode, which is kind of what I'm focusing on this year, things like the persimmon, you just type that in. They have all of the correct nutritional information in there. You just have to put how much of it you have. And what's interesting, if you're one of those people who have a hard time- Is she weighing things out though? If you're not weighing things out, it's all right. It's all well and good to say like, oh, well, I had this, but if you're not weighing it out, then how do you know how much you really had? Figuring out what to cook or you don't know what you want to eat. You know, you want to eat nutritious, but you're not sure how. You can start a simplified meal plan, keto or vegan for a week or whatever else, just different diets that you want to try out. They have meal plans for that. that give you four pre-planned meals a day to help build lasting healthy habits. Now, if you're interested and want to download the app, you can click the link in my description and download it. App sounds good. I mean, like if people don't know what to do for food or they get stuck or they're lost on ideas in terms of like, um, what's it called? Like recipes. That seems like a good app, a bit like my fitness pal. It is definitely something you need if you're trying to lose weight, tracking and having something that helps you with that. Uh, it's good, useful, helpful. For free and also- So I would say for this particular video, it's a good sponsorship. So if you're interested in upgrading to the premium version, which gives you access to all of the recipes that they have and allows you to customize things like micro and macronutrients, like even more thoroughly, like really dial it in. There's a link down there. Yeah, you can use chronometer for that as well. Like chronometer is very good for seeing like how, if you're hitting your daily uh, micronutrient growth goals, I tried to use it, but I found it not as user friendly as what my file is. But that could just be because I've used my fitness file for like a decade, pretty much. So you know, I'm kind of used to it. But chronometer is better if you're looking to focus more on uh, your mineral and vitamin intake. Apologies about that. There as well, that gives you 55% off the premium version. So huge thank you to LifeSum for sponsoring this video. Now I kind of feel like doing some yoga. Keep this healthy train rolling. This room is great, but it's so gosh darn echoey. I feel like. I feel like, why do I sound like that? I feel like I can never like do any kind of like little talking updates. It always has to be B-roll. It is, it is really echoey, but she could easily fix that by putting some things on the walls, so like on the ceilings for the, for the sound. <clears throat> so it's a bit more noise cancelling, not noise cancelling, but like it's not echoey. Because it is so echoey in this room. Just come downstairs. I came up with a way to rectify this. I think if I bring all my squishmallows, every single last embarrassing one, and put it in here, it will act as some kind of buffer and it'll have a little adorable audience. And it makes the echo less terrible. That being said, I think on my yoga regimen, I want to start including like trauma-based yoga. I see all this stuff all the time about like releasing stored emotions and stuff. And I've definitely had like a weird like emotional release. <sighs> that sounds like nasty in a way. But like several times when I went in an in-person class to yoga, they're in Shavasana just started like crying at the end of it. So, um, I don't know. I, I guess if that works for you, then great. I've never heard of trauma-based yoga, um, but I suppose like, you know, part of yoga is like meditation and getting in touch with your breath and all of that. And, you know, that can perhaps help with, um, you know, accepting thoughts or thinking of things that have been hidden and like accepting them or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know if therapy would be a bit more beneficial for that, but if yoga does the trick, why not? There's like something to be said for that. So I'm pretty interested in that aspect of it because I think that there's some things that I need to kind of like work through and get over and I'm wondering if this can help. And I know that like if you're looking at it from a certain point of view, it sounds very woo woo, but I've even heard stuff about like- Was she not feeling better help at one point? Pretty sure she did, right? Sorry, I'm confusing my influences. It's possible. What happened there? If she did, if she did use better help, I guess they weren't very helpful, maybe. Like stretching the psoas muscle and all of the benefits of like trauma release from that from places like the huberman lab podcast which is not woo woo it's like science-based information so i'm gonna pop on the telly and uh pick some kind of yoga routine with that in mind so yoga is great um i really encourage especially people that are weight lifters to do yoga or as you get older stretching and staying mobile through the joys and flexibility is really important for aging um, and also with weight training but to do it for fat loss I wouldn't say no you're not gonna build really muscle like, yes obviously you build core stability and strength and all of that sort of stuff but making gains it's not something you do with yoga um, and for fat loss it's like you don't really burn a lot of calories unless you're doing like a hot yoga or like a really intense yoga class but let's be real like it's uh, it's more it's more in addition to just like general health well-being as opposed to a pursuit for fat loss, I would say, an activity.
Skipping through the, the three minute B roll here. Chicken pig pepper fry. I mean, this is like a really good snack. So, this is maybe 200 calories. Okay, me and the guinea pigs are having a little snacky snack. Just some cucumbers, radishes, cottage cheese. The guinea pigs obviously aren't having the cottage cheese, but they partake in the radishes and cucumbers. A girl, radishes are slept on. So crunchy, so good. I just got out of the shower, that's why my hair is wet. But me and Stevie went to dinner at a sushi place, and I nearly forgot to film it. So that is why you're seeing footage right now of half Yeah, so... Sushi isn't inherently bad. I actually like sushi, it's like more of the healthier options, not the deep fried ones, which is obviously what she went for. Deep fried here and deep fried there. If you're gonna eat sushi on the weight loss journey, trying to avoid the deep fried sushis, go for the healthy sushis. Um, I don't know if this is all she ate. In This in itself is maybe like, 800 to 1,000 calories worth of sushi, I would say, if this was like just the only two rolls she had. Feet and rolls. We got a creamy salmon roll and something called a spicy snowflake roll, which has cod and cilantro, and it's just glorious. And we also got like the complimentary miso soup and the salad that comes with it, which I forgot to take a video of, but it's just like basic miso and a little side of iceberg lettuce with orange ginger dressing on it. <laughs> so if you've been to a sushi place, you know. I love and hate sushi at the same time. Love it because it's delicious, but hate it because I'm usually hungry like an hour later. Hence, you just get so full at the restaurant and then it's like gone. I don't understand. But it was me and Stevie's seven months, so we decided to go out to eat. Really, we just, any excuse, <laughs> honestly. But seeing as in January. This is also probably why she's not losing weight, huh? Understandable. It's nice to go out for dinner with your partner. Uh, it's a nice activity to do, date nights. But yeah, if you're going out for dinner a lot and it's like things like sushi or unhealthy, then the weight does pile on quickly. You, you can go out for dinner and eat healthy too. I've done it a few times. I've done it many times, actually. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about choices, really. January, I'm gonna start doing no added sugar for 30 days. Sushi is kind of off the table because sushi rice has some sugar in it. Pretty sure everything pretty much has sugar in it, so it's gonna be a tough month. But I'm curious to see the results of that. But because it was our seven, she lost like 17 pounds, I think, right? Months. We went out to dinner, and also we kind of started doing this like little tradition where we go to Barnes and Noble, and Barnes and Noble has more tchotchkes than it does books, and. I get these little things that are called tato potatoes. They're just like little potatoes <laughs> that are dressed up as stuff. They come in these mystery boxes and this is the one I got this time. It's a little potato in front of the Sydney Opera House. But yeah, that's just kind of a thing that we do. Pretty adorable if I say so myself. But I'm gonna sit here and edit for a while before going to bed. I just wanna thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you on the next one. Bye. So based on this, she showed us that she had like a super healthy breakfast, a bit of sushi, and then that's, that's cottage cheese. So basically she's showing that she's eating, eating around maximum 1800 to 2000 calories a day, but she's not losing weight. So this is not very representative of how she is normally, right? I think what's more realistic is that she eats the sushi plus other things. Um, so yeah, I would like to see more full days of eating, Re also realistic ones. And when she maybe is off track or I suppose like showing the sushi is like, you know, going out for dinner and stuff, but you know, this is not, uh, this is not, this is not maintaining a 250 pound body, this, this day of eating. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to go. That starter, that starter. The breakfast she made is very nice. I have made it before as well. I highly recommend it. Quite easy to do. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to make it film another video. Uh, we're not sure when you'll see this. We'll see. And then I need to eat my pre-workout, which is going to be quick with rice, as usual. And then I'll be training legs. Because I'm going to go to Garretage Park. If you're in Sofia, Garretage Park is an elite gym. They have the Rogue and Atlantis equipment and the Lyco. And I'm gonna do the pendulum squat and I'm gonna do the glute drive and I'm gonna destroy my lower body basically and I'm super excited. So on that note, I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, insert a sushi emoji, and I will see you next video. Bye guys.